Alright. I, uh... I got some... Some good YouTube videos, uh, viewed, and now there's that Enderman again. Can I hit him from here? Uh, can I hit him? <laughs> Period. This is just not working. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Uh, I did pick up the item, right? Yes. Ugh. That was painful. Swim all the way back over to our mine entrance. We really, really need a way up into the base from the uh, from the riverside because this this isn't gonna this isn't gonna be good for long term use. Like there's got there's got to be a, a shorter way into the base um, that doesn't involve carving out an entire hillside. <laughs> because as you've noticed. It takes a while to clear out an entire hillside. Um, it's looking very nice, though. Um, <clears throat> in case you wondered how I measured out my uh, torch pattern, it's just a zigzag with... <laughs> with uh, the middle row gone. Um, for the flat surfaces at least. Because it's just kind of there. Um, it's a uh, It's a Euclidean measurement, um, however, the specific XY coordinates, um, well, the XZ coordinates, I should say, uh, the Y coordinates don't change because it's a flat surface. Um, but the XZ coordinates, uh, specifically, are each off, uh, or each adjusted, I should say. Um, by two. So, uh, for example, uh, X two Z two would be, uh, would be one example of such a change. Um, I'm pretty sure there is a, uh, <laughs> a reference to be made, uh, about those initials. Um, 
However, I'm trying to keep this uh, channel capable of streaming on Twitch. Uh, and Twitch has a very strict policy against um, adult content. And so I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> because I would like to leave the option of streaming on Twitch open, uh, maybe. Um, but yeah, the specific coordinate change is easily laid out in this 3x3 three three grid and then I just take out everything that is not at those two specific ends and that is the uh, the lighting grid uh, that I'm currently using. I don't know how effective the uh, torches specifically are um, I do know that my lighting method is a, uh, what's known as a Euclidean method. Um, it means it measures in a diagonal. Um, and of course the Euclidean method is, uh, the more accurate of the methods, um, simply through the virtue of uh, measuring on the diagonal. See, I knew that looked a little bit off, and I couldn't tell why. So I measured again, sure enough. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, it's a good method. Um, the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition content, uh, I know does not follow the Euclidean method. Um, however, they do, uh, have the Euclidean method as an optional variant rule. Um, and I personally like Euclidean, um, because it gives a sense of uh, uh, of good direction. Um, however, uh, I'm not extremely well versed in Euclidean mathematics, uh, content. So, I would not exactly be the best reference guide for it, probably. Um, simply because I just haven't researched it. Um, so I'm not capable of really giving any form of detailed uh, response. Um, the Euclidean method does seem to have, uh, certain uses, uh, I suppose they would be called. Um, for starters, it's a great way to get your players to really start thinking about where they are in the room. Um, because uh, normally people see things as just squares when they play uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Um, but if they 
find themselves facing off against something that's diagonal from them, and they realize that their movement speed isn't going to always be, uh, you know, one square of movement. Maybe it's going to be a diagonal. Um, then that diagonal is going to end up causing... Uh, well <laughs> I had forgotten about that there was a torch here but I took out the wall because mine entrance <laughs> um, hmm well um so yeah, the Euclidean style has its uses. Um, it's mostly a question of how those uses get applied, however, and less of a question of, uh, like, is it a good idea? Because if they get applied in a way that uh, has well, no value. Um, I mentioned value uh, last episode as well. But if they get applied in a method which has no no value, no bearing on the situation, um, then what usually ends up happening is that the uh, the method just starts to fail. It starts to break down into non-functioning uh, components. Uh, thing I'm looking for is up here. I'm also wondering why there's a freaking zombie pigment in my base again. Uh, Well, at least he dropped a weapon. I should really start storing those in that chest, not over here in this chest? No, that's dirt. This chest. Yeah. Um... Yeah. I'll probably smelt down the gold once I get enough for, uh for an ingot. Um, I should put away the uh, various materials that I have gathered, however. Hmm. Well, that's not good. That's my third chest of, uh, my third barrel of cobblestone. Um, the dirt one doesn't look too far behind either. Um, I mean, the dirt one is actually quite a ways ahead of cobblestone, considering, um, once I move these four into there, uh, that will be four, five, six, seven. I'm, I'm working on the fifth, um, but I'll have seven dedicated barrels of storage for cobblestone or for dirt. Just dirt, nothing else. Just dirt. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit insane. Worth it, though. Totally worth it.
just to speed things along, I'm basically just uh, throwing in the... I'm filling in the top three first because they'll already have the space reserved. Um, and it also creates this nice little pile in front of me. Um, which will come in handy uh, when the uh, last bits are being placed. Uh, let me swap that there. Or it might come in handy now. Um, wow, that was fast. <laughs> I did not expect to run out of soil so quickly. Uh, let me fill this one next because... Yeah. I heard that pick up and it was just like <laughs> like a machine gun. It was beautiful. Um Okay, so I might have gone over the maximum number of entities. Um that can be spawned, and it might have caused a small, small uh, bit of confusion in the code where the, uh, the game might not quite remember um, how many items were in each of those barrels, and the game might have gone and forgotten uh, to keep track of such things. Yeah, that's, that's always an awkward moment when that happens. So yeah, I might have lost a few items when I did that. Um, however, it did free up space for me to craft. Um, I need more logs. For me to craft a few more barrels. Because I need more barrels. <laughs> Again. I broke down the logs, built the slabs, um, and now I, I'm going to build more slabs, because I'm going to build more barrels. Um, so I built two sets of slabs, that got me six barrels, um, because each set of slab was six slabs, and... Oh, I'm going to need more twigs. Oh, boy. Eh. So much crafting. 
I mean, it's literally in the name, Minecraft. Um, but still, so much crafting. Um, let's see. So the first thing I need to do is reclaim that torch. Uh, and then the next thing I need to do is reclaim this torch. Voila. A full wall dedicated to storing dirt. Just dirt. <laughs> Okay, uh, and that upgraded our storage capacity for the cobblestone as well. So we have more room for cobblestone. Hooray! Just what we needed. <laughs> he said with a dry, sarcastic undertone <laughs> as he begins self-narrating for whatever reason. So yeah, I'm just doing that trick where I uh, drag and drop uh, the the contents, and the reason for that is quite simple. I do not want to have to sift through and pick out every single bit of cobblestone in order to uh, pre-sort all of these different um, sections. Like, yeah, no thanks. Um, I, I, I don't really enjoy that much uh, extra work. <laughs> and uh yeah that's that's just not interesting to me so right i was going to make torches i forgot about that so i need those uh logs again because i now need to make more twigs Uh, like I said, I can go through, uh, I can just chop right through my entire wood supply, uh, pretty easily, but I try not to. <laughs> um, that being said, however, it is extremely easy to just go all the way through the wood supply because it's just so, so, like, underpowered. Um, but yeah, you, you can get a good view of why I torch in this pattern. Um, it generates a very nice aesthetic when looking over it. Um, the particle effects... Uh, don't seem to be too bad, unless I'm looking this direction, at which point I know exactly why they're so bad. It's the nether portal. Um, 
the nether portal particle effects mixed with all of these torches seems to generate disagreements inside my phone. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll call them disagreements. Um, another way of putting it is my phone absolutely hates me for doing it. Uh, <laughs> um, partly joking. Um, nope, don't step in the lava. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's a very nice visual effect because the light level, despite being a Euclidean light level, um, still generates in a very visible manner, which uh, allows for uh, fine-tuning the uh, the visual coordination between processes, you know? Um, and it allows for extremely accurate course correction. Um, the educational value of Minecraft Bedrock Edition alone uh, really, really helps, uh, a lot with the, uh, the material components of, uh, basically the world. <laughs> um, the minecarts for uh, constructing a uh, an auto smelter, for example, um, where you're capable of walking up and just throwing your ores uh, in a storage chest or in a hopper, either one works. Um, but the uh, the materials are then transported from there into a uh, into a um, a hopper, which uh, or a hopper minecart, which then transports the items into uh, all of the various smelting furnaces, or it could, uh, yeah, I mentioned hopper, um, but it'll then transport all of the items into furnaces where it's smelted and then automatically retrieved and brought back to the player. And the player will not have to go through and check every single furnace in order to retrieve their item. Um, the experience stored in the furnace uh, will sadly be unretrievable in such an array. Um, that being said, however, if you really did want to have your uh, experience retrievable, all you'd have to do is break, uh, break the receiving uh section, the part which retrieves the item from the furnace. Um, and this is easily done by simply either just filling the entire system, um, or uh, you could also uh, simply use redstone to lock the extraction hopper. Um, that would work as well. Um, or if it's a hopper minecart, you could just pick up the hopper minecart. Um, 
I don't remember if the hopper minecart drops as a separate hopper and minecart entity, or if it drops as uh, the hopper minecart entity. Um, item entity, specifically. Um, but the, the hopper minecart is relatively easy to retrieve um, because I know that it does give you all of the parts um, that much I do remember about it I just can't remember if it gives you the parts already assembled or not <laughs> uh, but yeah the the Euclidean method so it's just diagonals, right? Um, and diagonals are actually one of the uh, fundamentals of the world as we know it. Um, for example, uh, the first shape that you make when constructing any shape is usually a triangle because it is the simplest shape. Um, whereas a circle is more of, uh, one continuous line or in more specific mathematical terms, it is a lot of really tiny lines that are slowly turning their, uh, focal point. Um, either one works either description works um it's a gradient okay <laughs> that's the word it's a gradient um you don't have to argue about it in the comments that is the accurate terminology the line is a gradient on a circle um i know some people might wonder how that is ever related to anything Minecraft. Um, you would be surprised because some of my most intense math debates have been on Minecraft videos. <laughs> Someone commented something on a Minecraft video and it's like, nah, dude, it's like this. And they're like, you don't know nothing. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And it's like, no, no, I do know, because I've done a lot of research on this topic. And they're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you have. And it's like, I don't think he understands quite who he's messing with. Um, <laughs> because my, uh, my dad's mother was an English teacher, and my dad's father was... A, uh, a math teacher um, and so uh, he was also a metallurgical engineer so he was very smart um, if you're wondering what a metallurgical engineer is a metallurgical engineer is the person who you could take any uh any sample of metal to and he would be capable with a large enough sample size of uh, figuring out what the metal is made out of and the difference between uh, the job of simply identifying the metal and a metallurgical engineer is that a metallurgical engineer is also capable of telling you what to add when you melt the entire thing down in order to turn it into what you're trying to turn it into. For example, if you want to make uh, surgical steel, you need a very strong amount of carbon, very high carbon rich steel. Um, and that will mean that you need to, of course, have a uh, appropriate mixture of carbon, but you don't want too much carbon because too much carbon will uh, cause you to uh, 
lose your uh, your advantage of having the carbon in the steel because what will happen is the carbon will then begin to uh, make the steel fragile and you don't want fragile steel you want sturdy steel um, the shearing strength specifically goes down very quickly when you have too much carbon um, so yeah you don't want too much carbon um, but you also don't want not enough uh, carbon because the carbon makes the steel well steel um, the organic matter specifically is what uh, merges with the molten iron and causes the entire uh, alloy to become uh, to become useful as surgical steel. Um, and of course, surgical steel is used in many, many things. Um, not always surgery related. Um, I know there is a use for it in the uh, more mature fields of um, of exploring one's uh, wants. There's um, there's a lot that goes into uh, into purifying metal and purifying various uh, various possibly extracted ores. Um, so there is... There's a lot that can be done to improve the situation. And there's a lot that can be done to... Uh, handle things better. However, the most important part of the situation is that the The most important part is that the uh, the measurements need to be accurate. I forgot to make torches. Um, so the measurements need to be accurate. Otherwise, the entire benefit of the Euclidean method will be rendered entirely wasted because of the lack of uh, the lack of capacity of use uh, preventing further advancement through uh, through understanding of the components of the room. Meaning, if you have no idea that there is a difference between one forward, one over, and, uh, 
and one diagonal. If you have no idea that there is a difference, then you just don't know. Um, it, it just doesn't compute, you know? You realize that you have no concept of there being anything different. But if there is something that asks, hey, uh, did you want this or that? Um, you usually respond by going, there's a difference. What's the difference? Well, this has you moving 10 feet and that has you moving uh, seven and a half feet. And it's like, wow, how'd that difference show up? Well, there's this thing called Euclidean measurements. And the inventor, some guy named Euclid, um, he realized that measuring diagonal is, uh, as the English, uh, would phrase it, a right pain in the arse. <laughs> um, the Scottish also phrase it that way, by the way. <laughs> uh, I, I am capable of performing accents. Um, I'm actually quite skilled at it, from what I hear. Um, for example, I can do, uh, I can sound like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, I actually have a, a good range for Schwarzenegger accents because I'm capable of sounding like Schwarzenegger when Schwarzenegger is in his early years. And I'm also capable of sounding like Schwarzenegger uh, when he was uh, a little bit older in his uh, in his uh, elected official years um, when he took a break from acting and he was being uh, the governor of California <laughs> the governor of, of California um, he was a very good governor um, he might have voted in a few ways that people disagree with, but that's pretty much every elected official in every elected race uh, campaign, because you're not going to please everybody. Uh, there are going to be people who are upset with you. It's not something you can exactly control, but that's what makes Schwarzenegger such a good elected official, is because... Schwarzenegger is already used to simply saying, I don't care, okay? You paparazzi guys are always coming around and harassing me, and simply put, I don't care, okay? If you want my autograph, just ask for my autograph. But if you're going to come and pester me and... Uh, just simply follow me around, just ask me where I'm going. Okay, just give me a quick interview on the spot and say, hey, I work for so-and-so. Do you mind if we, we ask you what you have planned for the day? You know, don't follow me around and, and hound me and find out every little detail by, by following my every footstep. No, just ask me. Okay. And they were like, wow, that's, that's such a marvelous idea, you know? Uh, Mr. Schwarzenegger, like, you're such a swell guy. You, you just let us ask you that. And it's like, well, yeah. I mean, it's what you're here for anyways, right? Um, and they're like, well, yeah, that is, that is kind of why we're following you around is to find out what you're up to today. Um, but like, 
you know, we didn't expect you to be so nice about it. Normally when a celebrity sees a paparazzi, they're like, oh my God, it's the paparazzi. Run away. Don't tell them anything. It's like, lady, we're just trying to tell your fans how you're doing. And it's like, you guys are always hounding me. It's like, well, yeah, your fans want to know how you're doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What are you up to today? Your fans want to know. It's like, well, shopping. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing? I'm buying groceries and stuff. Okay? Like, don't just chase me down and, like, try and figure out what I'm doing. Just ask. You know? That's all it takes. Simple question. Hey, what are you doing today? Um, it's a great conversation starter. Uh, and sometimes people are just looking for a compliment. Uh, sometimes people just want to know that they're being heard. People are weird, complex beings, and trying to understand a person is as easy as trying to solve a riddle without knowing what the riddle is. Which sounds easy until you realize that you have no idea what you're trying to answer because you don't know what the question is. <laughs> Which, believe me, I've surprisingly been in that situation. Um, I, I actually have, uh, sadly. <laughs> I, um, I found myself in that situation surprisingly recently. Uh, let me just deposit that torch there. That is a lot of torches. It really is. Um... Like, it can be difficult to talk to people sometimes. You ever notice that? Um, like, I understand uh, what uh, Dingo Doodles means when Dingo Doodles mentions how it's like everyone views you on this pedestal when you're when you're famous. And they're like, oh my god, like, you're so amazing, you're doing great, uh, keep up the good work. And it's like, oh god, you want me to continue doing this? <laughs> uh, can I continue doing this? Am I capable of that? Um, and you really start to question yourself. And it causes a lot of doubt. Uh, mostly self-doubt, um, because the, the speed at which everything changes, um, causes a lot, a lot of people to just freak out. Okay, they panic. They're like, oh my god, I can't take this. And it's like, you totally can take this. Um, you're just panicking. <laughs> because, for whatever reason, you thought it was a good idea to become famous, and you didn't think that people would be all that interested in you when you're famous. And it's like, no, people love you when you're famous, 
and they're going to be really super interested. As a matter of fact, they want to know everything about you. Uh, they want to know what your favorite color is, uh, what your favorite uh, mood lighting is. They want to know what your favorite uh, champagne scent is, okay? Uh, I don't know if that's an actual thing or not because I, I don't I don't drink champagne. Um, I'm I'm actually non-alcoholic uh, because my family uh, is full of alcoholics. Um, I mean that medically. Uh, my family is full of people who have a condition where their body converts uh, alcohol into uh, the same uh, neurological pathway as cocaine, which is very unfortunate because it means that if I ever drink alcohol, that it will be as though I am trying to quit cocaine if I ever try and stop drinking alcohol. And uh, in my experience, um, it's not the first one that kills you. It's the last one that kills you. But, you know, that first one definitely packs a punch um and if you're not careful it definitely will be the first one that kills you because if you're not careful if you ever let your guard down um on alcoholism it it will definitely definitely uh hit you with a boxing glove and just knock you out because it doesn't discriminate. Um, so don't drink, you know. <laughs> um, some people find health benefits from a bit of uh, beverage. Uh, and, you know, there's, of course... Uh, soda or water um water of course being healthier um there is of course uh other things which can be uh, imbibed. Um, That's something I wouldn't actually mind hearing about in the comments. What what kind of drinks do you, do you people drink? Um, what kind of drinks do you, do you folks drink? Because, um, like, my drink selection is usually extremely limited. Um, I, I don't really vary my, my palate much because, uh, I just can't afford it. <laughs> I'm I'm poor, um, so I am too poor.
I mean, I doubt that's actually going to provide much help, but... Eh. I tried. Um... So yeah, I, I don't really vary my... my tastes much, because... Um... I'm somewhat limited in my options because uh, I just have a genetic predisposition to become addicted to alcohol, which means I must avoid alcohol um, because it's an allergy. You know, I'm, I'm allergic to alcohol. Um, that was a creeper. Just got these blocks placed. Eh, let's see, I gotta measure this out again. Okay, so that goes. Eh, let's fill it in with that. Okay, that got blown away too. Oh my. probably did a lot of damage to my armor, so I should check on my armor at some point soon. Um, currently I am repairing the lighting that was damaged, and just double checking that all of my uh, lights are installed correctly. Um, I should be careful near that cliff, uh, I still need to light it up and chop it down. Uh, you may be wondering why light it up first. The answer to that is simple. Monsters. <laughs> I do not want monsters spawning while I am chopping down the hill. Therefore, I want to make sure that I have lit the hill properly in order to prevent monster spawning. If I fail to, pre uh, to prevent the monster spawning, then I will find out very quickly, um, because the result will be that monsters will start spawning, and then I will find out why they're called monsters. <laughs> um, P.S. It's not because they're nice. They're not nice. <laughs> um, monsters are monsters, and monsters are mean. Um, some monsters have a meaning, and some monsters don't. Um... Yeah, I'm just kind of calculating where all of these are supposed to be placed. Um, so yeah, I managed to clear out this whole section. I quadrupled the land available, which is flat. Um, I have not fully finished expanding it. I need to light up all this, uh, spawn proof it, basically, and basically uh, make sure there's no bad guys showing up to kill me while I'm uh, chopping the place down, basically. Um, So yeah, that's what I'm up to. <laughs> uh, yeah, why not? I'm 
craft the last bits. Uh, So yeah, um, there's probably a few spots where this could get improved, but that's what chopping the whole place down is for. Um, and as you can see, the effect is beautiful. There is a spot over there that is missing a torch. I saw it. Where is it? Right there. Um, but yeah, the effect is beautiful. Um, it generates really nice lighting. Wow. I was hungry. Um, but yeah. I should hop in a bed anyways because I need to sleep. Um. You gotta sleep regularly in this game because if you don't, you start spawning phantoms, and phantoms are bad because phantoms A hit really hard. Um, and B, uh, well, they hit really hard. Um, <laughs> like, you, you don't want phantoms. Phantoms are bad for your health. Um, so you, you want to make sure you sleep regularly in this game. I've got cobblestone, which goes there. We've got the diorite, which goes there. Craft up some more kelp into blocks. Deposit said kelp into furnace. Well, blocks of dried kelp blocks. Um, How much kelp do I have to retrieve before this thing is capable of just running out? Uh, three. Okay, well, looks like I'm standing here for a little bit listening to it click. Uh, while I'm waiting, I'm going to grab these logs and I'm going to start resupplying my, restocking my supply of twigs. Crafting the twigs by breaking down the more complex uh, blocks. Uh, I can break down the, the birchwood planks. Uh, and that actually refilled my, my twigs uh, already. Because uh, I crafted down the birchwood logs. Uh, and now I'm waiting on two more of these to get smelted so that I can, 
so that I can grab uh, one more kelp block. Uh, or its shorthand name is kelp block, but it's actually a dried kelp block, a block of dried kelp. Um, and it is a placeable block for those curious. It's just, why would I place it when I could burn it? <laughs> um, such a simple question, but it's surprisingly effective. <laughs> it really is. Um, what did I need? I needed... Well, first of all, I'm going to need more shovels. <laughs> so, let's get that. Um, second of all, I'm going to need uh, torches. I need torches. So, I need to grab my coal once again. Grab, like, <laughs> I didn't want to grab 24 of them. Let me close this door so a creeper doesn't walk up behind me. Um, I do want a lot of coal, just not too much coal. Uh, so I grabbed a stack of 63 coal <laughs> and crafting torches okay I've got a stack of 64 torches I shall now head out and I shall during the daylight hours uh, brighten up this area over here in order to uh, prevent monsters from spawning on it. Starting with right there. <laughs> yeah, see? There was monsters here. And now they are burned up in the sunlight. So yeah, I'm just vaguely placing these torches everywhere. Um, the exact positions don't really matter, uh, as long as I have coverage. Um, we'll worry about exact positions uh, once we've leveled the entire hill. Um, in the meantime, we want to just make sure that we have all of our lighting situation uh, covered. And we want to create a safe work environment um, because we want to make sure that we don't get blown up while we're out here running around uh, because we want to not die. <laughs> um, kind of a primary objective in Minecraft, don't die. <laughs> Um, that's why people play on hardcore mode. Uh, I don't play on hardcore mode because I die a lot, but, uh, that's beside the point, you know. The fact that I die a lot has plenty of reason why I don't play on hardcore mode, but it's not the point of the conversation that we're having. Uh, I remember this. I climbed up there for some coal. I can actually turn that into a staircase to the top. Um, that'd be useful for cutting down up there. Uh, I should keep that trick in mind. In the meantime, I believe I have sufficiently uh, illuminated this place. Quite thoroughly. Um, I 
I just don't want monsters spawning on me because uh, I'm going to be working up here and I'm going to be clear cutting uh, just all the way down through all of this. So I don't want to have to deal with monsters uh, all the time because that would be annoying. Um, so situations like this space next to me where there is an unlit patch where monsters could quite easily spawn um, right down here. I just want to put a torch there and just make sure that there's enough lighting for everything because I don't want any little nasty surprises. Um, sometimes I like surprises uh, when they are useful and when they are uh, innocent and sweet and kind. Um, this is not one of those kinds of surprises. <laughs> Uh, this is this is the nasty kind of surprise that we don't want. So I'm I'm making sure that there's enough lighting in order to uh, keep this a nice friendly area. Um, because without the right lighting, you're going to find yourself in dangerous situations with no concept of what to do. Um, for example, you always want to know where the exit is. <laughs> um, it sounds kind of simple, sounds kind of silly, but it's true. You always want to know where the exit is, because if you don't know where the exit is, well, then you're just kind of out of luck, aren't you? So yeah, the fact that I have to start at this layer is actually a sign of just how much digging I'm going to have to go through. Um, because that means I'm going to need to dig out uh, three layers below where I am, which is a minimum of two passes. Um, And currently, I'm just uh, measuring out the uh, staircase <laughs> for accessing this portion of uh, of everything. So I actually have to go through this again, and then. I need to switch to my pickaxe to dig through the stone. Um, so I'm going to have to probably place a few more torches down again, because I did take out a few torches when I dug all this out. But I'm going to have to go through and make sure that all of this is capable of being climbed on when it comes time to uh, to dig out that side of the hill. Um, 